In this video, we are going to focus on the Mu's render problem, and let's start with the preliminaries of this model. So, in real life, it is not always possible to exactly predict the customer demands. This means that there is uncertainty in demand, which means the demand is stochastic. However, we can determine a distribution function to represent the demand by using the past data. So the challenge here is that we have to determine the order size before the demand is known. So this results in two potential issues. One, if we order too much, then we have extra inventory and this is going to cost us inventory cost. And two, if we order too little, then we, have, we lose sales. So since we don't know the demand, in the demand in advance, this is a big challenge. So in before we start, what we already know, we know the selling price of the item that is represented by P, the cost of purchasing, which is represented by C, the salvage value of inventory, which is represented by S. And what we want to do is to determine the order size to maximize the expected profit. So maximizing expected profit is also equivalent to minimizing the expected cost. And another goal could be to satisfy the in-stock probability, but we are going to focus on the first goal, maximizing the expected profit or minimizing the expected cost in our example that we are going to talk in a little bit. So we have three cases in the new Smender model. So one, demand is bigger than the order size. This results in an underage cost. And this cost is computed by selling price minus cost. And in terms of notation, we will find it by P minus C. If the demand is less than the order size, we have an overage cost, which is computed by cost minus salvage value. And this is equivalent to C minus S. And if the demand is equal to the order size, then this is a good case that makes us happy because in this case, we don't have to worry about the inventory costs or lost sales. So in summary, ordering one more unit increases the chance of overage and this results in an expected loss of co which is the cost of overage times gq gq here is the cumulative distribution function which is equivalent to the probability that the demand is less than or equal to q and on the other hand ordering one more unit decreases the chance of underage which results in an expected gain of cu underage cost times one minus GQ in this case. So GQ is still the cumulative, pro, cumulative distribution function here. So we talked about this overage and underage costs and therefore our cost function is composed of these two. Overage, expected overage cost and expected underage cost. So mathematically, we could represent this summation as CO, the underage cost, times expected number of units ordered over demand, plus CU, underage cost, times expected number of units ordered below demand. So to get more mathematics involved, we can have these two values represent as these integrals. And if we call this summation as YQ, what we do in general for these optimization problems is that we take the first derivative and set it equal to zero. So now we can go ahead and take the first derivative of yq value with respect to q. So this derivative is going to be equal to co under overage cost times gq which is the cumulative distribution function minus cu under cost times 1 minus g q and we find this i'm not going into the details but we find this by using the leibniz rule and therefore this is the result that we find when we take the derivative with respect to q and therefore we can go ahead and take the second derivative now 
So second derivative is going to be equal to CO over cost plus CU under cost times GQ. So GQ, small GQ is the probability density function. So, and we know that this value is greater than or equal to zero. And this tells us that yq is convex and therefore the optimal q value occurs when the first derivative this value is equal to zero so since the second derivative is greater than or equal to zero we concluded that yq is convex and therefore the optimal q occurs when the first derivative is equal to zero and therefore let's set this first derivative equal to zero one minus g q equals zero and from here what we find is g q star q star represents the optimal is equal to cu under each cost divided by cu plus co so this value is a very very critical value for us so cu divided by cu plus co we call this value critical factor you can also see this being called critical value critical ratio ratio and so on but we are going to call it critical factor and now let's talk about why critical factor is important for us so assume that after computing the critical value, we found the value p percent. And now this p percent gives us the probability that the demand is smaller than or equal to a value x. In other words, or in another representation, we are sure that p percent of the time, the customer's demand is satisfied. So this is why critical factor is important and what it represents, what it actually means. So by using this critical factor, we are going to be able to determine the order size. Now let's go into the example problem for this new vendor application. So assume that we are operating a coffee shop and we know producing a box of ground coffee costs $10 and the selling price is $16 a box. So we sell these ground coffees in boxes and one box is sell, sold for $16. If the coffee stays in the store for a long time, the, we want to sell this coffee as soon as possible, right? Because if it stays, then the expiration date will get closer and then we may just need to waste that and we don't want to do that. So, as the expiration date approaches, we drop the selling price to $7. And this is called the salvage value. This is the um, salvage value that we talked about previously. So, based on the demand from the past few years, we know the demand distribution for ground coffee. And this is given in table 1. So, this table tells us demand for demand being 21 units, 21 boxes is 0.1. Demand being equal to 22 boxes is 0.15 and so on. So what we are going to do is we are going to determine the expected demand for boxes of ground coffee. We are going to determine the optimal order size Q and we are going to find the expected profit from ordering this Q boxes of coffee. And let's go into the calculations. So the first part asks us to determine the expected demand for boxes of ground coffee. So this is basically the expected value calculation and expected demand is equal to demand value 21 times the probability corresponding to that demand value 0.1. So 21 is from this table 0.1 from that right hand side plus 22 times 0.15 plus 23 times 0.15 24 times 0.3 plus 25 times 0.1 and finally 26 times 
0.2 and this value is equal to 23.75 boxes of ground coffee so we found 24 or 23.75 boxes by using the expected demand policy so assume that we operate our company based on our expected demand policy and given this 23.75 we would say well let's round this up to 24 boxes and our order size is 24 so if we had a policy based on the expected demand that's what we would choose and the next question is to determine the optimal order size so when we talked about the critical factor we said it is going to help us to find the optimal order size so the formula for critical value let's call it cv was cu divided by cu plus CO. So CU is underage cost, CO is overage cost. And remember the formula for CU is P minus C and CO is found by C minus S. So where, here P is the selling price of the item, C is the cost of purchasing or producing, S is the salvage value. So the to, to find what these values are, we go back to our problem description. So in the problem description, we see that the cost of producing here is $10. So this is our C value. And selling price is given as $16. So this is our P value. And the salvage value is $7 because that is the amount that we drop the price to after we get closer to expiration date. So we have our P value 16, C value 10, and S value 7. So next thing is simple enough. We are going to plug in this va these values. So P is 16, S is 7, C is 10. So P minus C, 16 minus 10, divided by 16 minus 10, plus 10 minus 7. 6 divided by 6 plus 3, 6 divided by 9, which is equal to 0.6667, and it is roughly 0.67. So now we have our critical factor, but we need more computations to find the optimal order size. To find that, we need to compute the cumulative probabilities for our demand values. So let's open another column here for cumulative probabilities so for the first one cumulative probability is 0.1 because there's nothing except 0.1 for the second one cumulative probabilities, probability is equal to 0.15 plus 0.1 which is equal to 0.25 for the third one 0.15 plus 0.15 plus 0.1 0.40. Next one is 0 0.70, 0 0.80, and 1. So, our critical value is 0 0.67, and it falls in between these two values, 0 0.40 and 0 0.70. So, rule of thumb here is that we always round up. So, it falls in between 0 0.40 and 0 0.70. And then we say we round up and say, well, okay, we are going to look at cumulative probability of 0.70 and that corresponds to Q equals 24. And the reason why we round up is that we look for the probability that the demand is less than or equal to Q and this value is greater than our critical value. So critical value is 0.67 um, and this is the probability 0.70 is rounded up. So therefore, we found our order size as 24 boxes of ground coffee, which is the same amount as we found with the expected demand, but that may not always be the case. So the optimal solution is 24 for the order size. So next question is to compute the expected profit from ordering 24 boxes of coffee. So all of these computations are going to be based on Q equals 24. So first we are going to do several computations to find the benefit, loss and profit 
and then we are going to use this profit and probabilities to find the expected profit for each demand value. So let's start with demand equals 21. So when we have a demand of 21 from customers, even though we order 24 boxes, we only sell 21 of them. So we are going to make money out of these 21 units of ground coffee, boxes of ground coffee. So, so we sell 21 of them. And the way we compute this benefit is going to be 21 times 16 minus 10. And 16 minus 10 represents selling price minus cost. So we are going to basically compute this value and multiply it by 21 for this case. And this value is equal to 126. And when we call loss, we compute it by the excess amount that we ordered, which is 24 minus 21 times the cost of purchasing or producing minus salvage value. So the excess amount is 24 minus 21, three units, three boxes of ground coffee. And loss is going to be based on the selling, uh, sorry, purchasing cost or producing cost minus salvage value. And this amount is equal to $9, three times three. Nine. So profit is basically 126 minus 9 equal to 116. And expected profit is going to be 116 times 0.1, which is equal to 11.7. So for demand equals 22, similar approach, 22 times 16 minus 10, and this value is equal to 132. And loss is going to be the excess amount which is 24 minus 22 times 10 minus seven, and this is equal to six. And the profit is 132 minus six equals 126, and expected profit 126 times 0.15, which is equal to 18.9. For 23, we have a value of 138 and Loss is 24 minus 23 times 3, which is equal to 3. And benefit minus loss is 135. And product of profit and probability is 20.25. For Q, demand equals 24. We have 16 minus 10 times 24 equal to 144. And this time, 24 minus 24 times 3 is 0. So what happened is this is demand equals order size case, and we have no loss. We only get benefit from selling these 24 boxes. And the profit is 144, and multiply it by 0.3, the value we get is 43.2. So what happens when we get to demand equals 25? So we order 24 units and the demand is 24. So we only sell 24 of them, right? Because we only have 24. We can't sell 25. So the, the benefit we get is still going to be the same as the previous case. Because we can only sell 24 of them. And loss is zero because we don't have any excess boxes of ground coffee on hand and there is nothing to sell for salvage value so we are not going to lose anything and the loss is zero and profit in this case is 144 and multiplying it by the probability is going to give us 14.4 for the last one similar idea we can only sell 24 of them and the profit we make is 144 zero loss profit is sorry Profit is 144 and expected profit is 28.8 here. So we are going to sum all of these values, which is equal to 137.25 dollars. So based on 
Q equals 24, we computed all of, all of the expected profit values for each demand value. And then we summed them up and we found total expected profit. This is basically finding the expected value probability times the value. So we did profit times probability and we summed all of them for all of these demand values. And the value we found is 137.25. So you could compute these values for other Q values as well. So by following the same approach, you could compute this expected profit for Q plus 23, 22, 21, 25, 26, and so on. The same idea, you're basically just going to follow the formulas that I showed in this table. So I proactively did these computations for all of these Q values, and this is the plot of these expected profit value. So the, the x-axis shows us the order quantity. So we can order from 21 to 26. And the expected profit for 21 is 126. And it goes up until we hit order size of 24. So this is the peak point. Therefore, this also shows us that this is the optimal order size. So this graph shows us that it is optimal we verify it and after 24 it goes down a little bit and then it goes down a little more so this graph shows us the peak occurs at q plus 24 and this is the amount that we found by using the critical factor value and this is the way we can verify that the critical factor finds the optimal order size so this ends this video. Thanks for watching.